Hi everyone, I'm Kat Oriel, a reporter with Forbes Breaking News. Today I'm joined with Angela Alsobrooks, who currently serves as Prince George's County's executive. And previously she was the state's attorney for Prince George's County as well. So thank you so much for joining me today, Angela. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, and so I wanna know about your background. What led you to today running for to be the next senator of Maryland? So talk to me how you got here. Well, you know, growing up, my great grandmother uh, was a person who firmly believed that we did not have the right to sit on the sidelines and complain about things we don't like. Instead, she urged that we should go farther and do better. And, and I've taken that to heart, uh, which led me to first run for state's attorney in 2010 when I noticed that my daughter was growing up in a community that I felt was less safe than the one I had grown up in, uh, inspired me to run for office and to make changes, to cut violent crime in my community by 50% during the time that I was state's attorney. But I can tell you also during that period of time, I came to really understand a lot of what challenged families, everything from lack of healthcare access, uh, very little economic opportunity, uh, concerned as well about safe communities and, and freedoms. And these are the things that I've worked on as county executive and, uh, and would desire to do that as U.S. Senator for more Marylanders to continue to work on the issues that are at the kitchen tables of everyday hardworking families. Uh, those are the things I've focused on uh, as prosecutor and county executive, and those are the issues I'd focus on as a U.S. Senator. So you've listed a few topics already, but what do you feel like is the most pressing issue? Is there one particular issue you find affecting Marylanders today? I think it's economic opportunity is the number one issue across families, is having the opportunity to have uh, not only increasing job opportunities, but also to have increasing income, the ability to afford the cost of living. Um, and so really economic opportunity, as well as healthcare access, I've heard from every part of the state, having access to specialists, having primary care physicians in your community, uh, being able to afford the cost of prescription drug medications and insurance. So these are issues that I hear all across the state, uh, but most especially economic opportunity, which is what we've worked on um, to bring affordable housing, to have transportation dollars and other resources to grow our economies in, in our communities. And those are the issues that I'll continue to focus on as a U.S. Senator to bring back those important resources to, to really bolster our economy. Well, speaking of bolstering the economy in Prince George's County, you had very big news earlier this week. Um, and in addition to bolstering the economy, you've done a lot to combat crime. So you announced that the new FBI headquarters is going to Greenbelt, Maryland in PG County. So what was your involvement in this acquisition and what do you feel like the impact is going to be on the county and the state of Maryland in general? So the FBI headquarters coming to Maryland is a great example of the kind of work that I know is important for Maryland families. I was really privileged to work along with Congressman Hoyer and our governor and, and Senator Van Hollen and Cardin and others uh, to bring this opportunity to Maryland, which will change generationally the opportunities for Prince Georgians and Marylanders. 7,500 jobs, uh, it means that we also bring to bear many contractors and companies that can help us to come um, and to increase the commercial tax base that allows us to care for Marylanders and allows us to have uh, increasing job opportunities, bolsters the work of our local colleges and universities who now have pipelines to cybersecurity and technology jobs. And so this is an example of the kind of work that I'll continue to do as a U.S. Senator, and that's bringing home those important resources that allow all of our families to grow and thrive. If you were to be elected into the Senate, what do you feel like your style would be like when it comes to legislation? Do you feel like you would be willing to work across the aisle, reach bipartisan consensus? Because some people you know, might say, I'm not willing to work on legislation unless both sides can support it. Or some might say, I only want to work with Democrats. So do you feel like you would be willing to reach across the aisle to accomplish some of these priorities that you're talking about? Well, I've been an executive and as an executive, you know, we've been solutions oriented. I am a solutions oriented um, leader. I believe in delivering things to my constituents. And to do that, you have to be both collaborative and you have to be willing to listen. Um, and so th that's the style that I have employed. It's meant that I've gotten the support of so many of my colleagues across the state 
That's what's caused the governor to support me, to cause Congressman Hoyer and Senator Van Hollen and Congressman Ivy and, and, and Fume uh, and so many of the other leaders across the state with whom I've had a chance to work uh, over the years it means that you know we, we've gotten things done and I will do the same as a U.S. Senator, to be willing to work across the aisle, uh, to be able to really work hard uh, even in our delegation, but really working with others and listening is very important. We are almost exactly a year away from election day, but we do have a primary coming up. So uh, talk to me a little bit about your campaign itself. Like how viable is it financially? And do you think you'll be able to out fundraise your competitor, Rep. David Trone, who has put $10 million of his own money into this race? This is absolutely a viable uh, campaign. It is, it's really growing at a really beautiful pace. We have tremendous um, support the support of over 100 elected officials uh, from Maryland. And we also have very strong grassroots support all across the state. The fundraising that we have done so far has been historic in nature. Um, and part of that has been that we've had contribution from all 24 jurisdictions across the state. So we are absolutely going to have the resources that we need to compete and to message. Um, it is not my intention to be able to match dollar for dollar the fund the the funds that a self-funded billionaire can put into his campaign uh, that's not the point um i think that what's most important is to earn a grassroots support of the people who's um, who, who i must represent and will represent um so we're focused on people growing the support among people which at the end of it is is most important uh, but we will also have the resources and i have to say this it is important to have people in office who live like and think like the people they represent um, the vast majority of, of, of people that we represent um, are people whose lives I understand, who I've lived with and whose kitchen table issues I understand. Um, and being able to write yourself a $50 million check uh, for a campaign, people want to see more people who live like and think like they do. All my final question for you, when we're talking about historic significance and representation, you know, your win as the only third black woman elected in the Senate ever in the history of our country would be not only historic for the state of Maryland, but like I said, the whole country. So my final question is, what would the historic significance of your win mean to you? Well, you know what? I think it, it is um, not lost on me, the historic nature of this race, um, the honor of having the chance to uh, represent in the state where Barbara Mikulski, uh served as Senator and to follow in the footsteps of so many tremendous women uh, to be able to, to represent all segments of our community. But I can tell you that uh, although I know that race and gender are among the factors that voters look at, there are many, many factors that I expect that they will make their decision based on. And chief among them will be experience. And when they look at experience, they will find that I have the best experience of anyone in this race to represent Marylanders, uh, given my experience both as a chief law enforcement officer, the experience that I've had also as an executive, having led, for example, during COVID, uh, the second largest jurisdiction in the state, uh, and delivering the, and, and at the same time uh, that we were fighting through COVID, we broke ground on 10 new schools in my jurisdiction. Uh, we opened up, a new, we're opening a new cancer center next year. We opened up a new mental health care and addictions care facility, all as COVID was happening, um, and built affordable housing, workforce housing. So I am not a stranger to accomplishing things and getting things done, and I'll continue to do that as a U.S. Senator. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me.